No matter where you grew up, chances are you grew up watching a medical drama of some sort. From Grey's Anatomy to House to ER, we are gripped by the marvels of the medical world. In real life, the people who aspire to become doctors really want to help people, and their work is truly incredible. So you've decided you'd like to be a doctor, fantastic, but what's next? I'm joined at the desk by Associate Dean of External Engagement, Dr. Mark Morgan, and Dr. Christian Morrow, Science Lead from Bonds Medical Program. So I was wondering, I'll kick off with you, Christian. Uh, what sort of subjects would you be studying? This is um, really hard for me to understand because I did not enter the medical world at all. No. I was in uh, communication, but can you just mm. start from the basics? So we have a big role in medicine of getting our students straight from undergrad. So straight as school leavers coming into our program and then turning them out in 4.8 years as functioning, practicing doctors. So at the very start, we look into anatomy, physiology, immunology, how the body works in health, slowly getting into disease. So it's quite an incredible process learning about the body, but also learning about talking to patients, dealing with patients, turning students from school leavers into professional working clinicians. Um, it's, it's a busy course in 4.8 years, and it's very much all hands on deck, but it's quite interesting. So we do have some postgraduates that come in with, with a range of skills. Some of them come out of biomedical sciences, some of them come out of physiotherapy, and then most of our students being direct school leaders. So it's a very diverse cohort. Um, subjects in the first couple of years, very much science-based, with a little bit of communication, critical thinking, and essential skills. And then in the later years, we'll hand over to Mark to talk about the placements and the experiences they'll get as they go through. So what sort of skills do you need to really enter the real world? Because it's very different to the textbooks, obviously. It is. Th there's an expectation that your clinician understands a lot about the human body. So we have to meet that expectation by teaching every part of anatomy, every part of the physiology, how the heart works in health and then how it works in disease, and then moving into identifying diseases and diagnostic reasoning and also talking and, and breaking bad news or talking to patients. So there's a lot of skills there in terms of communication, understanding, knowledge, and then even synthesizing treatment regimes. The first couple of years are spent here on campus. We have a campus here at the main Rabina, but also another one at the Rabina Hospital where students are a lot more immersed with the clinical environment. Our last couple of years are very much spent watching, watching, experiencing, practicing. And so it's quite a useful course where the knowledge will come first and the application comes later. So on campus here, first two, two to three years, very much knowledge acquisition, last couple of years, experiences, processes, um, and working in the field. So they're ready and they're employable and they're ready for the clinical environment as soon as they finish. And ready for those placements, which you're the expert on this. Can you talk us through a placement, a typical placement? Well, it's a really good question because no two placements are the same. But it's a chance for students to work with clinicians in a setting where patients are being looked after and really get a, a feel for what those clinicians are doing, but also to, to get involved in uh, talking directly to patients, trying to um, ease their, their, their route through, through their illness. Um, for example, in uh, general practice, a student might see a patient first um, in, in a room, work, uh, work out what the, the key issues for the day are, um, work out what, what needs to happen, and then the GP will join and they'll go talk through um, what the students uncovered, and then the GP will add their knowledge, and a three-way discussion will start between the patient, the GP, and the student. And eventually, yeah. there'll be a discussion once the patient's left about what the students learned from that experience. Wow, and then how do you decide what you'd like to specialise in? I find this quite complicated. How would you know? Well, the students have a chance to, to experience medicine all the different start, um, parts of medicine through their um, rotations as medical students. But I think most students leave with a couple of areas that they might be interested in, and then they might change their mind several times. Medicine's such a broad church, you can, uh, you can start in one place and then choose to do something different. Absolutely. So it's, it, I, I don't think I meet many doctors later in life who've had a passion for one area of medicine and stuck with it the whole way through. Yeah, I'm sure that you've got to have uh, multi-skills and a, a holistic understanding because it's completely changing and there's always new evidence and new research. So it's a very dynamic sort mm. of degree, isn't it? Yeah, and the, the, the knowledge in medicine, um, that, that, that's growing all the time. The technology we use is growing. But those basic skills of talking to a patient, looking after a patient, 
really understanding where they come from. Those skills are the same. The skills of physical examination are still absolutely critical. It doesn't matter how many scans there are and, uh, and high-tech pieces of kit. You do need to be able to start off just trying to get into the shoes of that person that's in front of you and understand what's happening to them. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I know how busy doctors are, so taking the time out of your weekend to come and uh, talk to all of the people who are tuning in from all around the world, we uh, couldn't be more appreciative. So thank you so much, both of you. My pleasure. Thank you.